That is everything around you. They don't care who they affect. There are large groups of people making decisions that impact us or putting out information and program that affects us who do not care how they are doing that or what effects that it does have on us. So who are you allowing to minister to you? Who are you allowing to give you information on the things that you need to do in your life and the pathway that you really need to walk? Who are you allowing to do that? Who is coming in your life and doing it to you? I said I was going to relate this to relationships because there's been inspiration for uh, me to tie this in together. One of the issues that we have in our relationships, especially our marriages and mainly our marriages, is that we allow people to interfere and give opinions on what they think instead of the two people coming together and praying to God. The two people getting on the same page, praying to God, asking for revelation and walking a certain way. That is specific to them. We abandon that in totality. What we do is we typically go ask other people about their opinions or their situations. And we infect the solidarity that we have with our spouse. You can't bring infections into your marriage, whether it be physical, spiritual, Mentally, however, there's all forms of infection. It's not always that you're bringing in outside babies or that you're bringing in outside STDs. Sometimes you're bringing in outside ideals that are going to come in and tear your marriage apart and you're not on the same page. You have to be on the same page. You have to be operating in the same way. And that is reflective for how you're going to operate in your life with everything that you do. It starts at home. The team starts at home. Who are you allowing to minister to to you about your situation? When you're asking for opinions, and ladies, y'all suffer from this the most. When y'all are asking for opinions, and what do people think about what you got going on? Who are you talking to when you're asking these questions? What type of relationship does this person have in their life? With their spouse? Do they have a spouse? What tool bag are they grabbing for from to present to you to tell you what you should be doing in your own marriage or relationship? What are they telling? Where did they get the information from? A parallel example. Black people loved Obama. Oh, man. Second coming of Martin Luther King. But do not like, I'm going to call her Kamala. Y'all say Kamala. Uh, it's, you know, black folks, we're going to remix your name. It just sound cool to me, Kamala. You know, uh, Vice President Harris, you don't like her. She's not black enough. When, in fact, if you do the research, she has more of an alignment in black lineage to herself than Obama did. Look at his history and where he came from. But we will allow someone like an Amanda Seals to come tell us something that without no fact come from a bitter space, uh, a bitter uh, spirit. And what it does is it attracts other bitterness, other bitter people to attach their ideals to that and run with it without having any real issue or real, you know, real knowledge about what's happening. And that's what happens in your relationship, men as well. You're allowing some, when you're bring, when you're in that bitter space, you don't need to be talking to someone who is living in bitterness because what they do is it increase the bitterness that you feel. And so remember what I said, a lot of times we're making decisions and choices based off of emotion. If you're in a bitter space, and you have bitterness in your heart, you're going to make a bitter decision. How often are we making decisions that we regret? 
And why do you regret them? Why are you regretting a decision that you made that should have been made in a sound state of being, sound state of mind? Because there's no wisdom there. There's no wisdom in that decision that you're making, and you're making that decision based off emotion, pure emotion. You're not coming from a place of logical thinking. And a lot of times when people are feeling the same way you do, and they collectively come together, when people collectively come together, they'll all be in this bitterness and make a bad choice. People can collectively make bad choices. People can collectively make bad choices. I think our black people are like that. We come together and collectively make bad choices. There's a, that groupthink is real. Groupthink can be full of ignorance, bitterness, terrible emotions, and the result is going to be bad choices. That happens to us often. That happens to our people often because we don't surround. It also says this in the Bible. You're safe amongst the wise counsel. If you have wise counsel around you, people that can actually reel you back in and say you probably shouldn't be doing that. Oh, man. Oh, how much more the world would be better if we all had more of that. I'm not directing this towards just women, but I will say this. I see, especially with a woman vice president who is potentially going to become the president of the United States of America, and I think that she will, this message is really for you. What kind of decisions are you making and who are you allowing around you to make your decisions? Because women are more communal than men. I say we're all communal, but some of us are more communal than others. And I'm talking to women. You are much more communal than your man, which means that you allow other decision makers to get around you and help you make a decision. But who are you allowing around you? This is why we need Big Mama. I was able to have a conversation with a friend who is uh, 48 and was married for 19 years. A lot of the relationship dialogue that we had was so helpful and I felt like it could be so helpful to women. She began to talk about all the things that she had learned in her marriage, her first marriage, and essentially she could have kept that marriage, but she learned from that marriage and she went to the next marriage. First thing I told her was, we need more women like you. There needs to be more women like yourself to reach back and talk to these younger women. And you'd probably save a lot more marriages. Because often what women are doing is they are getting in groups in their age group at that in particular time who does not have that experience, does not have that on their resume. They are recycling bitterness and are making poor decisions and choices based off of that. Because women are temperamental. They will make a choice of the now. 